In 2020, Car and Driver magazine found that the life cycle costs to own and operate some electric cars is getting close to even with gasoline cars, even though their initial purchase price is so much higher. Their time is coming, and that's good news for climate change, because so much of our carbon emissions come from transportation. In places like Ontario, 35% of our carbon emissions come from transportation, while only 2% come from generating electricity. Many of us are eager to do our part to reduce our carbon emissions, but how do you figure out if electric vehicles are ready for your particular budget? That's complicated for a number of reasons. First of all, because the market is changing so fast. There's an explosion of new models coming out these days, and their prices are dropping fast as the price of lithium-ion batteries drops. So you do need to do your own research to figure out what the prices are in your area. The second reason that makes it complicated is because carbon pricing is going up, at least in places like Canada, but soon in other parts of the world as well. In December 2020, our government announced that the carbon price will be going up to $170 a ton by 2030. If you buy a car today, it's still going to be on the road by then. And at that point, you're going to be paying an extra 30 cents per liter on gasoline just for the carbon price. And you need to take that into account now when making your purchase decision. The third thing that makes this complicated is the time value of money. Suppose that an electric car costs you an extra $10,000 up front, but then it saves you $20,000 in gas costs over the lifetime of the car. Clearly, that's a good deal in the long run. But what if there were other possible uses of your money, which is always the case? What if you had a mortgage? Would you have been better off putting that $10,000 on your mortgage and saving on interest for all these years? Or would you have been better off putting the money on the electric car and saving on gasoline? The way to approach this is by comparing the levelized cost of driving of electric and gasoline vehicle options available to you. I've created a spreadsheet on Google Drive that you can copy over to your account and modify as needed to suit your particular situation and find out how much more you might be paying or how much less for an electric versus a gasoline car. One of the inputs that you're going to need is the fuel economy rating. And the easiest way to get that in Canadian units is from Natural Resources Canada's Fuel Consumption Rating Search Tool. Now, this tool by default gives you ratings in units of liters per 100 kilometers. And even if you search for battery electric vehicles, the search results initially give you data in equivalent liters of gasoline per 100 kilometers. What you're going to need to do is drill down to the actual vehicle page that you're considering. And in the table below, you're going to get the fuel economy in units of kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is what you really need. As you're considering your first EV purchase, you're probably going to run into some old complaints that just aren't true anymore. So let me try to clear up some of those for you. The most common myth you hear is that electric vehicle range is just too short and the charging infrastructure isn't ready yet. That might still be true if you live in a really remote region like the Canadian subarctic or something, but for most people you're going to find that there are lots of chargers everywhere as you want to go. You can find out just how many chargers there are along your routes on the website PlugShare.com or on Natural Resources Canada's electric charging station locator. As you map out your chargers, realize that 90% of the time you won't need them. And that's because with an electric car, you have your own gas station in your garage and you can leave every morning with a full tank. You do need a car with enough range to be able to do your daily commute without stopping and come back and charge overnight every night. But you're only really going to use those commercial chargers during the weekend road trips. And that means that it's at your destinations on the weekends that you need the chargers to be present, not in your neighborhood. So then people say, but that means that I have to have a special charger at home. But no, you don't. This is a photo of how I charge my car with a regular 120 volt outlet. This is what I used while I was commuting 200 kilometers a day for five days a week. Now granted, I was kind of pushing the envelope, but realistically, if your daily commute is 90 kilometers a day or less, 
you don't need a special charger. A regular 120 volt plug will do. Another myth that you're going to hear a lot is that in a few years you're going to need an expensive battery replacement. And for those of you who have had trouble with, uh, with uh, cell phone batteries, I can understand where that fear is coming from. But electric vehicle batteries are designed for long life. Laboratory tests suggest that the latest generation of batteries should be able to last for 10 years or more, and you can get actual road data for free from Geotab's website. We've had an electric car as our primary vehicle for five years now. It has 100,000 kilometers on it, and it's fine. Its range has faded by almost 20%, but again, all you need is enough range to do your regular daily commute without stopping. So as you shop for your next car, I hope that you consider more than just the cheapest option. I know that I paid a premium to go electric early, and I did that because I don't want to be a freeloader. I want to do my part to help address climate change and to protect my family and yours. I hope that you feel the same sense of duty as I do and that I've helped you figure out what might be realistic options for you. Thank you for watching.